Hey, how's it going today? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial on how to make smoke. And I don't know if you're noticing a trend with these videos, but I'm actually working my way through the elements. So I have fire and I have clouds and now we're doing smoke and eventually we're going to do water and land. And then excitingly, we're going to maybe make some robots. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start blowing everything up. <laughs> So that's the pattern. It's going to be creation and then it's going to go to destruction. So smoke is actually not that hard. It's just a bunch of settings you need to know. There's only going to be five things. If we go into our scene editor right now, you'll see I've got three things in there. I'll start from scratch for you. So let's go ahead and clear this scene out. So if we go in scene editor, every scene always has cameras and lights. And that makes perfect sense, right? Because without light, you couldn't see with the camera. And then of course you need something to see with. And that's the camera. So every scene always has that. This scene will only have uh, a reference object, an emitter, and then also a volumetric. So the first thing we're going to start with is creating our, uh, and these are all going to be based on null objects. So the first thing that we're going to create is our, a null object is going to be our reference object. So we're going to go to item, null, add null, and we're going to type in ref for that. And we're just going to go OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag this playhead all the way to the end. And on the Y, we're going to give it a little animation. And we're going to go negative 1.45. That doesn't have to be that precise. And then on the Z, uh, it's a 2. So if you got it right, it should just move like that. And that's all that does. And that's going to drive our turbulence. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come into Null. And this one is going to be our emitter. So we just type in emitter. And we go OK. And I actually do have to refer to some notes on this. We got to go to properties and we're going to go to effects, add effects, and we add our emitter right there. And then it comes in here. There it is right there. And we're going to double click this and this will take us into all the settings that we need to know. Okay, so birth rate is 50. Like I said, you can play around with some of these. Generator size is going to be two. This is going to be zero. And this is going to be two and the particle limit is three. So it's always good to double check when you're going through these. You don't want to uh, miss something and then have to go back and you know try to figure out what the heck did I forget to put in. Invariably, I end up making that same mistake anyway. <laughs> okay, so 50, 202, 1000, that looks right. And we just go on to our next tab here, which is our particles. And this one we're gonna do particle weight is one, uh, variability is zero, particle size is one, the variability is 0.5 particle resistance is zero. This is the size of the life is going to be 100, and everything else is a default except we are going to check output size. So there you got 101.510, 100, and zero, and all that's checked. Okay, and then on to the next. See what we got here. Okay, so the only, everything's default here except on explosion we're going to put one, and vibration we're going to put one, and that's good for that. And then we go in, I love this etc tab. <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, for this gravity, we're just gonna put in a four there and everything else is on the default. Last but not least, I should say, is rotation and we're gonna put that to align to path. And that is that, and we don't have to worry about these last three. Now, if we hit play, we should see something flying in the air there. Okay, good, 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 good. Now, believe it or not, we're um, getting on the home stretch here. We're going to go back again, and we're. it's always good to drag this back to the beginning. Okay. And then anyway, we're going to add another null now, and this one is going to be our volume metric, because this is, after all, volume. And I'm going to call this smoke and go OK, because this is really what's going to give the drive the appearance of the smoke. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into properties. Let's see here, let's go into properties. This is really the only tab that we need to mess around with, this one right here. And we're gonna set this to volumetric. And of course it jams up and right away we start seeing something there. Okay, and then we're just gonna run through these settings here. So we've got our source item, it's primitive type is volumetric. Our source item is actually gonna be the emitter. And it's a sphere, and we're going to use nodes, and radius is one millimeter. This is going to be 100 mm. And then emission is black, and the scale is going to be zero. And scattering is going to be two. And absorption is going to be zero. And texture, and then of course, texture mode is going to be non pyroclastic. 
and then the texture is going to be three and that's going to be one so let's double check these real fast emitter fair use nodes one one meter 100 millimeters zero two zero 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 three one okay that's really it there's nothing else on these other tabs that we have to worry about everything else is default the only thing now that we've got to do to bring this home because if we hit play right now we're just going to see a bunch of like bubbles or balls or something like that it doesn't look anything like smoke if we go into vpr and look at it same thing right it doesn't look anything like smoke because we haven't added really any smoke texture to it while this is in my mind as far as what this is looking like we can go into backdrop and click off the gradient and while it's fresh in my mind too we can go to render tab and go to render properties changes to interpolated turn on that isbg sampling that's it for that okay so that's a quick setting there now the last thing to really bring this home is to add our our textures to it and again i gotta look at some notes here for this because I do not have a photographic memory and I haven't done this enough times to have it all memorized. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we got three things we need to add to this. So the first thing is a gradient and there it is. You just type it in and you double click it and it pops up right there. And we'll just move that down there. And of course I joke about this, but this isn't far from true. You always need turbulence, no matter what it is. Okay, turbulence, there's good old turbulence. And then the last thing is we're gonna need a random vector there. Double click on that. And there we go. Okay, so let's get this party started. Okay, so let's just hook everything up so we get that uh, nightmare out of the way. The particle ID, this is gonna go into our seed. And the relative particle age is going to drive our is input into the gradient right and then the output from this is going to drive that's going to go into position and let me move that over a little bit and we're going to have another one going into rotation and then uh, there's a lot coming out of this one here so from turbulence the color is going to go into scattering and the alpha is going to go into texture assumption scale and also to texture right see did i miss oh and this one uh gradient is going to go from alpha to radius and that is as far as i can tell everything hooked up like it's supposed to be so let's go into our things here and make some settings this one's pretty straightforward we're just adjusting the alpha on a scale here so we already have our one key so the first one is going to be zero that's our first key and then we click about, I don't know, maybe like a fifth of the way down, like right there. And this one alpha is going to be 75. And then we're going to come right about there. And we're going to put our alpha at 100. And then we're going to take this all the way to the bottom. And we're going to make our alpha 200. And everything else stays the same. So that's what we got there. Yep. And then uh, the next one is we'll close this. And now we go into good old turbulence. This one I do know by heart. Small scale is 0.65. Uh, contrast is 50. And frequencies is 12. And don't forget this where it says reference object. You've got to click that and put that there. And if everything is correct, double check something here. I just want to double check I'm not missing something uh yeah it looks all right okay so if i did everything correctly it should look like smoke now do and it kind of does doesn't it that looks like smoke now you're not going to see the the resolution on this because it's kind of coming out of the ground so what we probably want to do here is reposition our camera so let's let's do that just move our camera here and let's see Let's see where we are with our camera. I'm just double checking. Is it in any special location? It's not moving. The camera doesn't move. So let's put the camera. Let's uh, click here and drag that back to the beginning. Click on camera. Let's see. And we're in perspective. For the X, let's just put that at um, 0.5. And then for the Y, uh, we can bring it up a little bit and just put it at, uh, let's say, 3 point uh seven five all right see what, what we're looking at right here go to camera view uh-oh well, i don't see anything hold on I'm, I'm way off here 
I think I have to, let's hit play and see if we can see our smoke. There it is. So what we're doing is we're, from this angle, we're really kind of in the smoke. So I want to just back up here a little bit. And Oops, not bank it, sorry. Didn't mean to bank it like that. Uh, let me just zero this out. Zero. So let me just go to position and we're just going to back, back up a little bit here. Yeah, so really what we're not seeing, we're... We're just seeing like the middle of the smoke, not the not the top or the bottom. We're kind of just right in the right in the middle of the smoke. Let's see. The other thing that you can play around with is your light, and there are some properties on your light. I've noticed that lighting, of course, is very very important, and it really makes or breaks a lot of your scenes. Again, you can play around with this for the samples. You do want to boost that up to about 16. So let's look at this in BPR and see where what we got here. Uh, that's kind of dark looking, right? And let me just see, I, some, I like to go into the top view a lot of times, just have a hard time getting my bearings. So I'm pretty sure I want the light more to the side. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I animated the light. So let me let me delete that keyframe right there. A lot of times it's good to turn off auto keyframes because you'll end up animating things that you don't really want. Okay, so what I want to do is just move this to the side here. And maybe, let's see, oh, I probably want to turn it more toward, but now that I know where it is, I can go into VPR. Let me go back into camera view and uh, VPR and let's just play. And I, I think this is where the, the artistry of it all is, is there's our, there's our smoke. And then of course you can play around with this lighting however you want it. So I have it at, what is it, 3.14. I think that's the default. So we can, if we crank that up, of course, we're going to start getting different effects as we go. I mean, it's like me telling you what your your steak should taste like. You want more salt or pepper. <laughs> okay, so now that's a lot more light coming from the side there, right? So it's giving it a lot more dimensionality and things like that. A little more dramatic lighting coming from the side. But I would say just play around with the lighting side. And of course the camera too. You can move around the camera. But that's basically your, your smoke effect. I will tell you that this takes a, quite a while to render. So you probably wanna do this, if you're gonna do this, like about turn it on at 10 o'clock at night. And by the time you wake up in the morning, it should be done. And that's for, for like four seconds because there's just so much data here. I, you know, it's hard for me to even get my mind around how many, how much calculations is going on for something this uh, complex. But anyway, that is smoke. So I'm actually going to end this tutorial and I am actually going to take off for about eight hours and then I'll come back and then I'll render this out so you'll have something to look at. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Thanks so much if you're subscribing. I really appreciate it. I will talk to you later.